Welcome to our lecture on RFRS2, Share-Based Payment Transactions. In this lecture, we will look at what is a share-based payment transaction, different types of share-based payment transactions. We will determine how to calculate, measure our share-based payment transactions, how to account for share-based transaction when there is a choice of settlement, how to account for modifications. Remember, this will be when there's changes how to account for cancellations. We will briefly touch on RFRS2 in group scenarios and we will briefly look at the accounting for BE transactions, FRG2. Then in terms of taxation and disclosure, I have included examples to work through. My advice in terms of RFRS2, you need to please know your principles. You need to study the principles, therefore you will identify that I repeat principles quite a lot for you to be able to remember them. Then my recommendation guys, please include a table. I will provide you with the format of this table. For all share-based payment transactions, please include a table. And then I want you to include a timeline. Remember the timeline is there to assist you to be able to identify the flow of your transactions. And this is especially important to be able to identify your number of employees and when there's cash settled share-based payment transactions. What is a share-based payment transaction? First, you need to identify that this is an agreement between two parties. The one party will be our entity and the other party will be another party. And this agreement entitles the other party to receive. Our other party will provide other goods or services to our entity. And in return for the goods or services, our entity, and I'm going to include this, pay, but not really pay. This is an agreement where there is certain conditions that should be met. In return, our entity will give the other party either one money or two equity instruments. RFRS2 will classify different types of share-based payments into either one, equity settled, two, cash settled, or three, a choice. Now, when you look at our definition that we have discussed, guys, you will remember we have indicated that the entity will receive goods or services and provide either money or equity instruments for these goods or services. Therefore, RFRS2 classifies the transaction in different types. Type number one, which will be our cash settled. Type number two, our equity settled. And type number three, a choice, either for our entity or for the other party. This other party can be an employee. When we have an employee, remember, the employee will provide a service to our entity in the form of the employee's contract. When we look at our equity settled, remember, our entity will receive goods or services. And in return, they will issue equity instruments to settle for these goods or services. Now, I want to take this one step back. If we have a normal entity that purchase goods, the normal entity will debit either an expense in profit or loss or an asset in statement of financial position and credit bank. Now, what RFRS2 indicates to us that when the entity pay for these goods or services and this will be equity settled in terms of the agreement, we will have to recognize a share-based payment reserve in our statement of changes in equity will increase on the credit side and decrease on our debit side. Then when we refer to our cash settled and our entity will receive the goods or services and will use cash to settle these goods or services. We need to identify in terms of our conceptual framework that there will be an obligation for our entity to pay for the goods or services 
And guys, therefore, we will have to recognize a liability in terms of this obligation. And we will then have to credit our cash settled liability account in our statement of financial position. Remember, our liabilities increase on the credit side, decrease on the debit side. Therefore, with a share-based payment transaction, our credit side of our entry will be replaced by either share-based payment reserve or our cash liability. Then what I want to indicate to you, when you read a scenario and they indicate that there is share appreciation rights. Now we will look at the definition just now. Immediately, you need to know when you read that this will be cash settled. This will be your first step with any IFRS 2 question. You will have to identify, is this equity settled or cash settled? Then the third type, there is a choice. When the entity receives goods or services, Guys, do you see, in all three of these different types, we are referring to the fact that the entity should receive goods or services. The entity or the other party can choose whether they want to settle this transaction in either cash or equity. You will identify that I have included our recognition journals at the bottom now i want to talk about our services provided by an employee you will remember in both of these types either cash or equity settled we will debit expenses or an asset now if an employee provide us with services we will have to debit our employee costs in our profit and loss therefore the expense account that we will use will be employee costs in profit and loss. When we settle and pay the shares, what will our transaction be if our type of share-based payment is equity settled? We will then debit our share-based payment reserve in our statement of changes in equity. We will credit our share capital. Why share capital? Remember, equity settled, therefore we will pay with shares. When we refer to our cash settled, we will debit our cash settled liability account and we will credit our bank account. Now I briefly want to touch on the definition of share appreciation rights. You will remember we have indicated that if you identify that there's a share appreciation right, immediately you need to know that this will be cash settled. Share appreciation rights is a method for companies to give their management employees a bonus if the company performs well financially. Such a method will be called a plan. The holder or employee benefits from an increase in the share price. They differ from options in that the holder or employee does not have to purchase anything to receive the proceeds. Now you will remember we've indicated with options in terms of our financial instruments lecture that an option is a derivative financial instrument. They are not required to pay the options exercise price, but just to receive the amount of the increase in cash or shares. When you look at options, remember an option provides an employee with a choice to purchase shares in future. When the employee purchased these shares, you will identify that in the entity's records, our entity will debit bank and credit share capital. Now, when we have a share appreciation right, we've indicated that this will be cash settled. Now guys, this is a bonus if the entity performs well. Therefore, if this is a bonus that should be paid out, you will have to credit your bank at the end of the vesting period. Therefore, if this will have an influence on our bank account, 
this will be cash settled. When will we recognize a share-based payment transaction? When there's goods, the date when the goods are obtained and services as the service are received. We have discussed how to recognize share-based payments 